Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in the last several videos, we've been taking a look at how to use Transex, and we're going to continue with that for quite a while. Uh, so don't be fooled by what you see here on the screen with the interplanetary MFD. Uh, we're not going to really get into interplanetary MFD for a while. But before we move on with Transex, I want to I want to start showing you how we can combine MFDs so that we can have better results overall. If we're, when we when we did the moon to the earth trip, I think it was the very last video, you saw that by setting our periapsis altitude, uh, you know, our PED, our focus PED according to Transex, by setting that to 200 kilometers and then and then going back to the earth, we had to do quite quite a lot of mid-course corrections because Transex is just so inaccurate. Well, IMFD has a, a program, it's, a, it's called MAP. It comes with IMFD and it's really powerful because it, uh, it can calculate multi-body solutions. It's not just a two-body solution like Transex. It can calculate uh, multiple bodies. And by doing that, it gives us a much more accurate uh, a way to calculate or a the, the much more accurate figure for when we set our periapsis altitude at a, at a planet like Earth, we don't have to, we don't have so much uh, uh, so much inaccuracy. In fact, it's it's like perfectly accurate around the Earth Moon system. So we're not gonna we're not gonna get into how to use IMFD for a while, but we are gonna introduce some of its features here, even though we're learning Transex right now. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. I'll put a link to this website in the description down below because Interplanetary MFD is not available on Orbit Hangar. And if you look for it, you won't find it. But you'll come to this website and you'll actually see a Lunar Transfer MFD up here at the top and maybe we'll get into that someday. But if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see Interplanetary MFD. And you just want to come down here to the download links and download version 5.5. There are some older ones older ones here, but I don't really see any reason to download outdated stuff. So download that, put it somewhere on your system that makes sense to you, and you know where you can easily find it. I've just got it right here on the desktop for simplicity's sake. Then, uh, just like we did before, just open the zip file, and there's nothing fancy or special about, about uh, IMFD's uh, packaging. It works the same as most of the other ones, so so we can install this quite simply. But before you completely tune out, I want I want you to hang out for a little bit because we're going to talk not only about the installation, but we're going to briefly talk a little bit about the configuration of IMFD. So if you've already got IMFD installed, you know, that's that's one thing, but we're going to talk a little bit about the configuration as well. Now, very quickly, uh, one way you can install it is just by highlighting all the stuff, dragging it over to your Orbiter 2010 directory and letting go. But let's look at the different directories quickly to see if we have to have them all. Well, the config we absolutely have to have. It's that's the configuration for IMFD, and it, I don't even know if it'll function if it doesn't have that file. So we need that. Documentation is of course always optional, but a very good idea to install. Modules. That's the actual software itself. That's the programming. That's the code. You have to have it, or you won't have IMFD. The Orbiter SDK again is the software development kit. If you don't know what that means, then you don't need it. And if you do know what it means and you're not a developer for Orbiter, then you still don't need it. Scenarios are completely optional. You don't have to have it. Uh, these are just sample scenarios that uh, come with IMFD. You can install that if you want, but you don't need it. So at the very minimum, we need config and we need modules, and that's it. That's all we absolutely have to have. So you can drag those into your Orbiter 2010 directory and let go. But it's also a good idea to include the documentation, in my opinion. So those are uh, those two folders are what you have to have. Then once you have that in your Orbiter 2010 directory, uh, start Orbiter 2010, go into the modules, and go into the uh, miscellaneous, and then somewhere in your list you'll see Enter MFD 55. That is uh, obviously Interplanetary MFD 5.5. That's what you just installed. Put a checkbox next to that, and then you will have interplanetary MFD ready to go. Now, before uh, we completely move on, or before we end, I want to talk a little bit about the configuration of IMFD. So go into your Orbiter 2010 directory, 
and this is just a dummy directory, so it's, you don't see all the other stuff in here. But go into your Orbiter 2010 directory, go into the config folder, and in that list of config files, you'll see somewhere in that list, you'll see imfd5.cfg. So go ahead and open that up. And we have some options here, uh, starting at the top and working down. The stuff here at the top is just color stuff. We're not going to worry about it. What we want to what we want to look at here are five variables. The first variable here is this non-spherical. Um, it looks like it's actually set to two by default. I thought it was actually set to one by default, but make sure that this is set to two. In a perfect world, we would set it to one, which would be automatic but the automatic setting doesn't seem to work perfectly, so it's best just to have this set to always on. What this is actually saying is, is Orbiter using non-spherical gravity sources or not? Now, normally, I would actually tell you not to use normal uh, non-spherical gravity sources. And in the very beginning of the Absolute Beginner Guide, you know, we, we talked about that a little bit and how it creates complications. It turns out, though, that when you start using IMFD, uh, the, the IMFD works better, its predictions work better if you actually have non-spherical gravity sources enabled in Orbiter. So if you have non-spherical gravity sources enabled in Orbiter, then you want to make sure that this is set to uh, 2, it's always on. Uh, if for some reason you want to continue using Orbiter with non-spherical gravity sources off, then you would probably want to set that to zero. But I'm not, I haven't tested that myself, so I don't know how accurate IMFD is if you have non-spherical gravity sources off. But if you do have it off in Orbiter, make sure you set that to zero. The other thing we want to change is the leg size. By default, it's set to three. And I'm not even going to really pretend to know what the leg size means off the top of my head, but we want to change that to one. Then the next option is the legs per frame. And I, again, I don't recall off the top of my head exactly what this is for. It's, I think it's just it's to do with the calculations, how, how, how IMFD is calculating things. By default, it's set to 10, but we want to set it to 64, and 64 is actually the maximum. So we're going to set that to 64. And the other thing that we want to change is the adapt uh, tolerance. Uh, here you can see it says lower value is higher accuracy. It defaults to 8, and you can have it all the way down to uh, 0, I believe. But 4 is a good compromise. If you set it, the, the lower you set it, the more lag you're going to have in IMFD. So maybe, maybe if you've got a really fast computer or something, you might be able to get away with a lower adapt tall of 3 or 2. But if you have any, if you notice that IMFD seems very laggy, like it's just not updating fast or whatever, uh, change your adapt toll, you know, four, four seems like a good compromise. That's what Dimitri told me to use, and that's what I've been using. And in my experience, even though I've got a really fast computer, in my experience, this has been, this has been fine. Now, the last variable that we want to change is the uh, date format. And we want to actually, yeah, the date format down here, it defaults to uh, the GET value. And in Orbiter, Transex uses MJD, Orbiter itself uses MJD, so it's kind of confusing to have the date format in IMFD show up as GET when everything else is using MJD. I guess the analogy might be like, you know, if all of the clocks in your house are, you know, a 12-hour clock and then you go somewhere and it's a, it's a military time, it's just kind of like, eh, you got to do these translations in your head. It's, it's just easier if everything is set the same. So if we change the date format, to zero, then we have the then IMFD will be using the MJD format as well. Now it's worth pointing out that you can't, you don't have to change. Um, I don't think you have to change any of this stuff technically. You can inside of IMFD even without changing the configuration file. Inside of IMFD, I know you can change the date format. I think you can change these other things as well. But the problem is that those changes aren't persistent. So every time you go into IMFD, if you want the date format to be zero or to be, you know, to be MJD, then every single time you load Orbiter, you would have to go into the configuration inside of IMFD, uh, inside of Orbiter, inside the program, and change it. Whereas if you do it in the configuration file, then and then save the configuration file, now every single time you load Orbiter, it's going to read this configuration file, and this will be its defaults. 
So those are the five things you want to look for. Let's go over them again. It's going to be non-spherical. That's the first one. Leg size is the second one. Legs per frame is the third one. Adapt toll or adapt tolerance is the uh, fourth one. And then the date format, that's the fifth one you want to look at. So make those five changes, then save your configuration file. And then you can load up uh, you can load up Orbiter and check out IMFD, although until we get into learning how to use it, you won't even really know how to look to see if those changes went into effect. But as long as you edited the config file and saved it, then you're going to be fine. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, just a quick introduction, an uh, explanation on how to get IMFD and how to install it. And again, we're not going to look at, we're not going to look in depth into how to use IMFD for quite a while because there's still a whole lot more that we need to we need to learn about Transex. But we can learn while while we're learning Transex, we can start merging in IMFD to use it for what it's good for. Because the, well, the one thing that IMFD has going for it that is just far and above everything else, every other MFD in Orbiter is that map program. That map program inside of IMFD is so powerful that it's just almost a shame not to use it. You know, and we'll see here in an upcoming video, we're going to redo that trip from the moon back to the earth. And I'm going to show in that video how just spot on accurate it is if we just simply take one extra minute of our time, and that's really all it takes, to when we're when we're getting up into orbit around the moon and we set up that maneuver to go back to earth if we spend it's not even a whole minute it's like 30 seconds extra to bring up imfd and use its map program to help us pinpoint our periapsis back at earth and you'll see in that video just how powerful that is and if you compare that to the last trip out to the for the last trip from the moon to the earth where we just had that super crazy inaccurate um inaccurate periapsis i don't remember what it was off by but i think it was like over a thousand kilometers worth of inaccuracy that's pretty terrible so you'll really appreciate the additional precision that we get with imfd that's it like the video if you like the video dislike the video if you dislike the video and if you have any questions comments thoughts anything like that leave those in the description uh, leave those in the comments area down below check the description for links i will of course put a link to imfd in the uh, description down below so make sure you get that get it installed get it uh, enabled in your modules and get the configuration file set as we have here so that you'll be ready to uh, use imfd in the upcoming videos and i will see you in the next flight